Hello. Hello. Let's see if my software here will start up. There it is. Uh, chat window is open. Looks like we're doing pretty good. Still can't see my stream health. Why is that? Well, hello all. I am a few minutes early here just to make sure that all the equipment is running the way it should be. I do have all the cameras set back up again. I even have my overhead camera up and running. Check, that's looking good. That's looking good. I'll just wait for some people to arrive and we will get into this uh, 12K and show you some interesting failures on this. And I've got the parts already all laid out for the repair of this board. Hey. Hey, Cliff. Good to see you joining in here today. Did you uh did you figure out that uh, smart three? I try to get everything situated here. This was supposed to be done yesterday, but unfortunately, I did. I had to postpone yesterday's live stream, uh, and I also saw that Sam was live too at the same time. So, uh, don't know if he's live today or not, but we will dig into this 12k here this is the tar amps md 12k it's the half ohm version hey hey drake hey, thanks uh i thank you for watching and uh, coming on to my channel here i do appreciate all the channel support that everyone has uh, has provided um i still can't believe that i have as many subscribers as i do i mean i'm just a i'm just a guy that fixes amps uh, I mean, this is what I do every day, all day. I try not to work on Sundays, but uh, sometimes I work on Sundays. But, yeah, I mean, this is what I do. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, a project, again, that I was supposed to do yesterday. But I had a ton of amplifiers that I had to I had to get packaged and get ready to send back to Hawaii. So I wasn't able to quite get to the live stream yesterday. So, and I'm... Do apologize for any glare. I'm not sure. I don't get a lot of comments about the video quality itself. Uh, I do have some uh, eight lamp T5s fixtures above me that's r really, really bright. So I'm trying to make it to where this doesn't glare on you so bad. Nope, not completely. We'll get back on it tonight when I get work. Did you find a buffer IC shorted between pin one, two, and three? Uh, oh, you uh, did. Go and replace the 7 May have caused damage to it. Oh, yes. So you had a failed buffer with no shorted transistors? That would be a very 
uh, uh, I should say rare occurrence if that happened. Uh, so far, quality is great. Hey, thanks, thanks. This is a, uh, this, I don't even say, I wouldn't even call this a camera. So I'm not sure if you guys can see it. Is it out of view? I'm not sure it's, yeah, it's out of view. Uh, this is a Samsung, the one of those new S22, uh, whatever it is, Ultra Plus uh, phones. I added a new business line uh, to separate my personal cell phone from business because I've been getting so many calls lately for repairs. I, I, I had to do something different with the, uh, with the phone numbers. So that's why you'll see on my new website that my phone number is different if you guys are familiar with my original phone number. So... Um, but yeah, hopefully this video is coming through okay for you. I'm not sure about the color. The color I see on the screen on the phone is different than the color I see on OBS. So uh, again, guys, just let me know if there's anything abnormal uh, about the video or the sound too. And then, of course, as a precautionary warning for anyone that's wearing headphones, I do have two big black labs here. Uh, they're just big babies, but they will bark at anything. And they are lar they're loud barkers. So if you guys have headphones in, uh, please remember that my dogs can bark pretty much at anything or anyone. So uh, keep that in mind, please. And we'll see what else do I need to cover right off the bat. Uh, the next thing is um, down below, I uh, am an Amazon affiliate. So any of the links that you see down below uh, are links of products that I use, tools, equipment, supplies, uh, and that also does help support the channel. So this 12K, this uh, 12K is owned by Steve. He was uh, with us day before yesterday on his, uh, was that a Stetson amplifier? I do believe that was. Um, and so this is another one of Steve's amps, which I figured I'd make a video, well, a live stream on this because this failed in a way that you typically don't see fail on a Brazilian style board. This is the half ohm version. So that is something to keep in mind as we progress through the repair of this. Uh, if you understand how or what makes an amplifier uh, dependent on the connected load, it's typically the uh, it's typically the output capacitors, the inductors, and of course the resistors that are across it. Those kind of set what the minimum load of an amplifier can accommodate. So something to keep in mind as we go through this, that this is a half ohm version amplifier. Okay. <laughs> well, my mic's on, so uh, yeah. Hopefully the sound for everyone else is coming through fine. And I don't see any lag yet. For some reason, again, on... OBS, my stream health bar is gone. Don't know where it went. I don't know much about OBS. So I'll have to dig in to see why I don't have that health bar anymore. So I don't know if I'm dropping any frames or not. So you're going to probably get a little bit of glare on the board here. As I... Get ready to pull output transistors. As we can see, we have a complete side that's shorted out right here. All nice and black and toasty. Almost every trace is blown on this amplifier. Yeah, yeah, this uh, this went down pretty heavy. So we're gonna have, we have some Zener diodes that are in half. We've got, I'm not sure about the gate diodes. But I do have everything lined up here, ready to go. I have the diodes for the, across the gates. I do have the 15 volt zeners ready to go. I have new capacitors ready to go. And I have the IRP 4115s ready to go in. So each bank takes 10 of them. So you're going to have five high side, five low side. And of course, each uh, transistor gets a 15 volt zener across the gate source. So 
I think we should just dive right on into this. It's uh, it's getting hot here in Central Washington, so I'm going to try not to drag this on too long. Uh, my poor AC is just uh, trying to crank away to keep this place cool. So the first thing we got to do is we just got to remove all these transistors. So I'll flip the board over for you guys without hitting the camera. And there's that nasty glare that I was talking about again, guys. I do apologize for that. I can help with that glare a little bit here. I think I'm going to get some diffusers for the, my, uh, my lights up above. That should help a little bit. I'm, uh, I'm kind of blind, so I need as much light as I can get so I can see. Uh, but you can see even on the bottom of the board... This whole area right here, oh, you can't see because I'm on the wrong side. Huh. Sorry about that, guys. There it is, right there. Even the bottom side traces are, are blown out on this. It's common to see blown traces on these boards, but it's not as common to see so many blown traces. So this side, I do believe, was probably under uh, full tilt when it failed. Or something failed. Probably, it could have been a shorted voice coil. Or it could have just been over temperature, got a little too hot. And then, of course, you know, as temperature rises, your, your junctions, the ratings of your junctions decrease substantially. I think I'd have to look at the 4115s, but one of these transistors that are used uh, have a really good heat rating. They don't really drop in current based on temperature, but I can't remember if it's the 4115s or the uh, 4120, what is that, the 4127s? Or the 4227. Oh, we have, we have... <laughs> This got so hot, the plasma burst on this uh, put copper right on top of the uh, solder mask here. It's going to be a little bit more difficult to take off. Yep, took out every single one of these traces. And this is a uh, this is a warranty repair board, so you know if I can't definitively definitively prove that this was user error, uh, I'm I'm gonna repair it under warranty. So I uh, I can't say this was user error. It could have been a temperature a failure, la lack of surface area on the thermal paste. There's it could be all sorts of reasons, so hey, Samaya. Hey, 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 thanks for dropping in. Please, uh, please feel free to share with uh, everyone uh, your excellent talents. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all these transistors. I will not uh, keep any of these transistors. They are all going to get replaced. And I put a new filter in my good old FR301 here. To It's a little quieter, so hopefully this doesn't bug your guys' ears so bad when I'm pulling these transistors out. And then we're also going to have to pull uh, two capacitors 
on the board. See, I think I might have got my camera a little too far over here. A little far over on my bench. And as I am doing this, uh, what would I call this? The boring work. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel, uh, please, uh, feel free to ask away. I will try to do my best to answer any questions for you guys. Like I said, I'm not, I don't have much of a sense of humor, so kind of dry on that end of things, but, uh. I will try to entertain as I do this fun job of removing transistors. So nine times out of 10, the power supply survive on these uh, Brazilian style boards. So I really don't check the power supply. Uh, the first thing I do when I get them in is I check between the positive and negative battery terminal. Because if you have a shorted power supply transistor, you'll see it. You'll see it on that terminal. And there's no shorted power supply transistors that I saw. So let me get rid of my garbage real quick here. My paper towel. I always have a roll of paper towels here because I just despise thermal paste. I just, I, I can't stand the stuff. It drives me crazy. I know, but I work with it every day. So a little thermal paste. So I'm going to get rid of my garbage here real quick. So I don't wear this thermal paste. All right. Transistors are removed, as you can see. Oh, uh, the power supply transistors are fine. And this bank here does not show any shorts. So we are going to be good on this bank. So I'm going to find the two capacitors. One's here and another one is... here let me hunt them down here real quick so oh gotcha all right okay so we're here and here those are the two capacitors that failed had a bad day did not survive. And we're going to pull them out while we're here. Close, close, close. Oh, wow.
helps if I unsolder the right thing. All right. That's how relatively easy it is to repair these things. So this capacitor here has got a hole blown right out the side of it, missing its, well, missing its uh, internals. And then this capacitor here, it blew out the top. And these are one microfarad, one microfarad, four hundred volt capacitors. Get my board flipped around, back in place over here. So then, all I have left is to pull all the zeners. And of course, I'm going to mark what direction they are in. Because sometimes when these things burn up, the solder mask here that identifies the position of the diodes is gone. So I just make it a good habit of just marking the zeners. I've got one here that's a little bit hard to determine because it's missing most of the zener body. So I'm going to get a little magnifier in here, see if I can see the color band where it used to be. Oh, yeah, gotcha. And then what I do is I just mark the arrow. The arrow is points the band. What is that again? Cathode. Uh, direction. Now I'm going to pull those off first and then I'm going to check the gate diodes. Once I get things going. And in most cases, I don't even question the Zener diodes. If they're shorted transistors, then I just replace the Zener diodes with new ones. And then later on, when I have free time, sometime, not free time, but not. Not much such thing as a free time, but what I'll do is I'll hook them up to my Zener test station and I will verify uh, Zeners on the bank that didn't burn up to see if they're still within tolerance. But this side here that did burn up, they're definitely going to go in the garbage can. I don't know how many people shop on Mauser, but I did notice on my last order that I placed oh, a couple days ago that these 15 volt, one watt Zeners, uh, they're getting a little thin on stock. So for all you guys that are looking for your uh, 15 volt, one watt Zeners, I would be uh, jumping on Mauser and seeing what the availability is. <laughs> But I, I order these 100 at a time. And now that I got most of that stuff out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and clean up the board.
with the isopropyl alcohol. Is anyone here that's uh, watching? Does anyone watch Phil's channel? I saw he had left a community post that his isopropyl alcohol caught on fire. Or something of the sort on live stream so i'm not sure i i wasn't watching the live stream but but he came out okay on that so this isopropyl alcohol don't underestimate it and don't get uh too complacent when you have flammable liquids sitting around Especially when you're testing these boards. So these amplifiers, this will do, what, 180 volts? No, uh, no, it can't. Nope, this is a half ohm version. So this is 160 volts. So these are 160 volt rail caps. So, you, you know, you're at least 140, what, 148 volts probably. Whose channel? Uh, Cliff, uh, what's his... Um, Or uh, Bill's channel. Yeah, uh, can't remember the name of the channel. He uh, repairs consoles, video game consoles. Yeah, I saw yesterday he put a post up about his isopropyl alcohol catching on fire. And he burned his hand or something. But, uh, the, you know, alcohol fires they're nasty because you can barely barely see the flame and it'll run away on you pretty quick so at this point here now that the transistors out and the zener diodes are out i can check the resistance value of the gate diodes the job of those gate diodes is just to make sure that that gate signal gets gets pulled as quick as possible back down so it'll tell me if I have any low oh actually I'm gonna be reading the I'm gonna be reading the uh, gate resistor so these are yeah I'm gonna have to use diode mode it's not going to let me use diode mode because I don't have enough forward voltage. Or I can pull all the gate resistors. Or I can just replace all the diodes. But usually these don't... Oh, there's a hole in this one. That one's definitely gone. Yeah, I think I will be re replacing the bank that failed. I'm just not going to mess around with it. Again, that goes back to returns. I don't like returns. Returns cost money. Money, you know... Time is money. So I will not, uh, if I even slightly question something, I'll just replace it. Now the bands for the cathode anode on these, are they're marked pretty, pretty decent compared to the Zener diodes. Uh, kind of. For instance, the one I just pulled off here, I cannot see the marking on the board. So I have not spun that diode around. So I just got to double check what direction it's in. One, two, three, four, five. So this is five and five. I'm going to do the first five diodes there. And I got to check the direction of that one. Boy, that diode is black. So it looks like all the gate diodes are the same direction. So, uh, good afternoon, chaps and Todd. How, oh, how far in the live stream are we? I just got the transistors pulled and the failed capacitors. 
and now I'm working on getting the components removed, particularly the uh, the Zener diodes and the gate diodes. Um, let's see here. I'm going to check the gate resistors while I'm here. 4.9 ohms. 13 megs. Looks like I'm changing gate resistors too. Of course I am. Uh, 4.8... Where's the pull down? That's open. That's open. Is it? Yeah. Or Four nine. So these are four point seven ohm. Ah, uh, there's one pull down. Four. Four. So did we also lose the pull down on this side? Let's see here. Or did I just miss it? Four seven four seven. It's this guy right here. Oh yeah, that pull down is open. So what's the value of the pull downs? I uh, see. I just seen that diode go flying. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, it's amazing how many things end up on the floor. Uh, it's yeah. I think the vacuum gets more parts than uh, than a board does. 10k so these are 10k pull downs all right i need to mark this here i'm going to mark this pull down resistor and oh and thanks for joining in zachary thank you thank you i do appreciate that uh 4.7 where's the other pull down there it is So those are 10k pull downs and that's a bad pull down so i'm going to go ahead and remove that and i'm going to remove the 4.7 ohm resistors and another common failure you'll see on uh, these boards when you have a failed output section is you'll see that the snubber there's a rc snubber a resistor capacitor snubber across this and sometimes it'll take out that snubber resistor I just had to straighten up something from the factory. They had a crooked diode. Can't have crooked diodes. Uh, let's see here. So, clean up these pads real quick. This is the quick way of cleaning up the lead-free solder versus using uh, the solder wick. Whew. 
I've got lots, a lot of trace repair to do on this. Uh, no problem. I've been checking out all your uh, tarnish repair videos. They have definitely come in handy over all my way on repairs. Oh, hey, that's so good to know. I, uh, that's one of my goals is just if I can help someone learn how to repair an amplifier, I have continued my journey in life because uh, that's what I've been doing my whole adult life is uh, just training and teaching people about electricity. This is just a different kind of, mm, I don't want to say electricity, but this is just a different style. Again, I was an industrial electrician for 23, 24 years. So I, uh, I worked on some really, really big projects. almost forgot to clean up the pads for the other section of the zener diodes but now the board's flat so a flat surface is a good surface for resoldering things oh where do we start um i'm gonna start with the my least favorite things to solder and that's going to be the zener diodes they're my absolute least favorite thing in the world only because one end of that zener diode is on a pretty significant area of thermal mass So hopefully everyone is staying cool out there. We're supposed to be 107 today. So let me get my Zener diodes out here. Again, these are one watt, 15 volt Zener diodes. These are from tar amps, so, uh, but typically if I need to get anything, I get them from Mauser. Uh, sometimes I'll get stuff from DigiKey, but not as often as I do uh, Mauser. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to switch views here real quick and, uh, Sorry for the mess. I know. It's actually not too bad. It's actually kind of clean. It's been a lot worse than this. Um, so going back to the Zener diodes being an area of high thermal mass, what I do is I use my solder paste for the, the high thermal mass side of the Zener diode. And of course, going back to my reference of the direction, which I can, on the side here that didn't burn up so bad, I can, I can still kind of see my errors up a little too much here. I can kind of see where this, uh, The direction of the zeners where they're supposed to go
So if any of you guys ever put a zener in backwards, you notice what the amplifier does? It lets you know pretty quick when you have one in backwards. Up, down, up, up, down, up, down. Up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, down. This one's right next to the uh, gate diode, so I'm going to try not to pull this gate diode off. And some of these zeners that they put in are right underneath inductors and makes it kind of a bear. So you guys can kind of see how I just flow with the uh, with the hot air. There, and that. Is all the zener diodes back in place? Oh, what do we got here? Uh, where you, let's see here. Definitely, that's where you find doing your soldering skills. Hey, serious piece. Hey, thanks for joining in. Yeah, and you know, a lot of this just comes down to time um, and repetition. Just like anything else in any trade, just learn things over time. The more you do it, the better you get at it. I remember one of the first Brazilian boards I did. I just, I had a heck of a time getting the Zener diodes in place and soldered in. It was just a nightmare. Um, but I've got a, I've got a process down that really takes a lot of time out of, a lot of time and frustration out of getting it done. So the, I'm gonna need one more u2d diode here so these u2d diodes these are i do these are these are fast recovery diodes um and just let you guys know you can't put just any old diode in if it's if it needs a fast recovery it it got to be a fast recovery uh i tried not on a brazilian board but i tried on a different board no i think it was i think it was a, a brazilian board uh that i tried using a diode that wasn't fast recovery and it didn't work <laughs> so it created all sorts of noise uh but uh, yeah lessons learned of course lessons learned
So I'm going to do kind of the same process here. for the uh, gate diodes. But I need to get one more UTD out here. The MURS220, that's what uh, Taramps is calling them. Please. There we go. We got five U2D diodes now. Same process. I'm uh, let's see here. Oops, I'm way behind on the video. Oh, hey, Damon. Hey, thanks for dropping in. I hand made drawings of the diode directions for several of the SD clones. Oh, yeah. I. I make them every time and then I end up throwing my post note in the garbage and then I just end up making it again. Um, yeah, this, that's just something I'm not good at memorizing things. Uh, so I don't have them memorized, but I do thank you for dropping in, Damon. Hopefully all is going well for you. Uh, is it mainly SMD? Yes. You mean for this particular board? Uh, Component-wise, besides your primary power components, your transistors, everything is SMD, uh, and your uh, your capacitors. Uh, most most all this stuff is SMD. Even the lines on these U2D diodes are hard to see. I need to go in and get my eyes checked again because, man, I just have a heck of a time seeing some of this stuff. So on the uh, solder paste, you'll see that it, it'll kind of dance around the puddle will. It'll dance around a little bit. And I just use the air to kind of guide that puddle around until it starts to melt. And then, uh, and then I set the component in place. I got one diode here that's a little crooked. You know me. Can't have anything crooked. I even go as far on like gate resistors, through hole gate resistors. I'll make sure all my color bands are the same direction too. Quality, right? Uh, let's see here. I'm actually working on an amp besides a tarps today. An Arctic. Oh yes, I have done. Is it one of those big? The Arctic Wolf. Uh, I think I did a video on that where, if it's the same size Arctic that I did where the rail cap there's a trace right underneath of it that i have no idea why the engineers even 
thought of doing that, but it shorted out to the tab of the rail capacitor and just obliterated the uh, auxiliary power supply. Uh, Damien, hey, good afternoon, sir. Do you, do you change all diodes in? I do. Um, I change the whole bank. This, let's, let's see here. I can try to show you, but there's 10 transistors here. This first five set of transistors, they still blew their traces out right here on the drains. Uh, but you got to kind of think of how these are put together. Your Zener diode is across the gate and source. These traces blew out on the drains. But this set of five over here, all your source traces blew out. So you know you had a direct short right through that Zener diode. Uh, so in just good practice, what I do is I change all the Zener diodes. Those are uh, those are critical to the function of the amplifier. So I don't even question the integrity of the Zener diode. Most cases, most times, this side, for instance, here where it blew out the drains, your gate diodes will tend to be okay. So... Do you believe we are good to go ahead and solder up the rest of the ends of these diodes? And what I'm doing is I'm just taking my solder paste here. And finishing up the ends of the Zener diodes and the gate diodes. Now, if your airflow is too high, you'll just push your components around. And you'll see that these Zener diodes and your gate diodes, they're, they'll all just kind of just fall into place. I used to be uh, really bad at using solder paste. It was a it was it's a skill that does take some time to get used to. Yeah, 
And you'll see that solder paste just kind of flash over. Almost kind of like doing your own flow soldering, but without the flow solder table. Good. So everything's tacked into place. Now, when I go through and put the transistors in and do the trace repairs, I will also go back through and just kind of fine tune any solder joints that I see on the uh, Zener diodes. Because again, the amplifier will let you know pretty quick when it's not happy with one of your Zener diodes. Okay, home. I'll uh, be out in the garage in five minutes to watch. Oh, oh yeah, you bet, David. A uh, 4.7 ohm gate resistor, right? Is that what these are using? I think. Yes, 4.7 ohm gate resistors. Let me grab some gate resistors real quick. 4.7 ohm. Oh, wait, oh, 05. All right, so we've got some good old 4.7 ohm, 1%. Resistors here, 0805 size. Oh, and I need a pull down. Five, is that what we pulled off was five of them? One, two, three four five and the pull down was the one with the black line so that's why i mark that's why i mark boards is so i know which one was the pull down and then these were 10k pull downs uh, so we have one two three four um, yep i need one 10k pull down All right, Taram, should you give me 10K? Not very often I have to change a pull down resistor. I'll get to the, let me find them here. Ten ohm, point seven ohm, one k, four point seven, ten ohm. Looks like ten k. Uh, one ohm. One k. Ten ohm. Wow. It's okay. Never appear.
Looks like I just. Hold on. Uh, somewhere around here, I have what I'm looking for. <laughs> Let me get that ten uh, K installed first. The 4.7 ohm resistors, I am going to use my soldering iron for. And of course I had one go underneath the board. Oh, there it is. All right, so. For these smaller components I do, I like to use my soldering iron versus hot air. Uh, the pads are so close, it just makes it hard to use any form of thermal or thermal paste, uh, solder paste for these small resistors. So sorry for my arm in front of the camera there. And of course, flux. I'm not bashful with flux. At all.
And I'm just going to go through and solder down these resistors. Piece of cake. In my opinion, there's really not much that's hard or difficult about repairing amps. It's just a practice thing. Yeah, that's true, Damon. Uh, you know, uh, that's the thing is I, I, I try not to do my live streams too late uh, because I get so, so tired by the time, you know, four o'clock rolls around. I mean, like today, today I packaged up, uh, what, what did I package up? 11, I got 11 amplifiers packaged up, uh, headed out for shipment today. So I just got, I was super busy with packing up amplifiers. So I'm already tired. But I push on, I push forward. Amplifiers, they, they never stop showing up, so I can't stop uh, fixing them. They'll just keep piling up if I, do, if I stop. So... All right. Now I should be able to go around, even though it's messy with flux. I should be able to go around and just double check that I have Oh no, do we have a bad 415 ohms from gate to source? You know what that's telling me. 7K, so this side is reading normal, 7K. I'm going to double check that pull down though because I'm reading... I'm reading 7K Where's that pull down? There it is. I'm reading 7K on a 10K resistor. Uh, is that going to be because of Yeah, I may it may be the gate circuit that's uh, that I'm reading here too, but this side here is kind of concerning because I have 415 ohms, which is not good.
So I'm just doing some quick checks here. To make sure that my SI8244 is okay. I must have some solder paste underneath a component here. Ten K on the pull down. Yeah, I think the other pull down might be out of tolerance. Hmm, four hundred and fifteen ohms on the gate circuit. Four nine, four nine, four nine. What am I missing here, guys? Four nine. What am I missing? Yeah, my gate circuit is not reading the way I want it to. Uh, SS, hey Steve, yes, yes. Uh, I'm here, what I miss? Oh, not much. I just got the uh, transistors pulled. I've got all the Zener diodes replaced. Uh, I got the one side of the gate diodes replaced. I'm trying to hunt down. I've got 400 ohms on the gate circuit here that I am not not particularly wanting to see so is it going to be a bad SI8244 that's the thing with these amps is they don't use uh they don't use a buffer in between the IC and the transistors so when the transistors have a severe short the SI chip, the most expensive chip on this board, stands a huge chance of failing along with the transistor. So, so just to check and make sure, I'm going to pull this SI off real quick here. And then check my gate value again. <laughs> well, yep. Yeah. All right. So there we are. That's what I'm looking for. Without the SI chip installed, I'm at 24K. So I'm, I've been saying this now for quite a while. But this chip right here uh, the si8244 drive ic that's what makes this whole thing run that is 110 dollars quoted by my suppliers uh, from i have a few suppliers and they're averaging between uh 75 to 110 dollars per chip so the SI8244 is an unreal expensive transit or uh, IC. Super, super expensive. So that tells me that the gate circuit itself Seven twenty four. Is there a hole in that snubber resistor? 
Got bust out the old magnifying glass here again. Oh, there it is. <laughs> so remember how I mentioned earlier about sometimes the uh, the uh, snubber resistor is taken out with it. Well, this is a 3.3 ohm snubber. Typically, there a lot of times on these board, not this particular board, uh, but you'll see a lot of uh, these be uh, one ohm resistors. But this is a 3.3 ohm resistor that was reading. What is that resistor reading? So this 3.3 ohm resistor is open. It's not reading anything. Yeah, money. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Hey, Young A, thanks for joining in. Yeah. If anybody has any connections or knows of anyone that's got overstock of the SI8244BB ICs, please let me know. Because uh, I'm in desperate, desperate need of them for private repairs. What I said it was, that was a 3.3 ohm? 3.3 ohm. 3.3, wait a minute, wasn't that a 1206? That is a, that's a 1206. Well, I have an 0805. All right, tar amps. Give me a 3.3 that's... Oh, man, you guys, come on. Uh, 3.3 says I should have some 1206. Ah, there we are. Whew. Thank you, Tar Amps, for supplying me with the stuff that I need. Yeah, I absolutely enjoy working for the guys. They're just they're just fabulous people. They answer any of my questions. If I need parts, they get me parts. Um I also now have in stock guys, I do have all the plastic ends for the tar amps amplifiers. For the MD base, they, they pretty much all use the same heat sink. So uh, I do have ends. So for all you guys that have broken ends on your tar amps, which I know a lot of people do, I have them in stock. Uh, I'm still working on the new website. Actually, the store is one of the last things I've been working on. Um, but uh, I will be having ends available to replace the broken ends that you guys probably have all right there's that 3.3 ohm snubber back in place check and make sure that my 3.3 ohm is good to go 3.6 yeah this ut 161 d meter it's a great meter does it, it does the job i don't know if you guys caught this on the other uh, day for yesterday's live stream but i kind of despise it <laughs> uh it still does a great job uh i like the fact that it has temperature versus my uh, ut 61 e plus but man it's it, it's slow it's six thousand count meter takes forever and the off position is one click up from all the way to the left. Like, come on, guys. Who does that? All right. Let's 
So I need to clean this board up because I should be seeing my pull down value uh, on the gate circuit and I'm not seeing it. So I'm thinking where the pull down resistor solders on is also blown out when the transistor took the trace out. Because you should see your pull down value between your gate and source. And I'm reading right now, I'm reading 24 point or 24.8k. And the other side, I'm reading 7.17k, which I'm going to double check that pull down resistor just to make sure it's intolerance. But I'm not seeing the pull down resistor on the side that had the drastic failure. I'm not quite sure. It should. Yeah, when it when that transistor took the trace out, it took the trace out for the pull down resistor also. So I'm going to have to fix that. It's kind of in a bad bad spot to be burn up. Uh, tar amps doesn't supply that. Yes, they do. Uh, tar amps will supply me anything that I need to repair their boards. Uh, it's just it's just that they have such a low supply of the SI eight two four fours that I have to wait to buy them from them for uh, private repairs. So yeah, and the UT one sixty one D beeps at me too when I leave it on. Um, but, uh, but yeah, their supplies are really low, which is the case anywhere right now. Uh, so they really save it for their warranty repairs. I do have some SI8244CBs that I will be testing. Uh, they are identical to the BB, except they have a lower uh, dropout voltage. The BBs use a 10-volt dropout voltage, and the CBs use an 8-volt dropout voltage. And I don't think by design of these circuits that the they're really utilizing the dropout voltage uh, characteristic of the SI chip. So uh, I'm going to be trying those BBs. The thing is, is I would like to have my own personal Brazilian board to test them on and not test them on customer boards. So I'm just waiting for the chance to get my hands on a Brazilian style board so that I can test the CB series of the SI chip. I'm just cleaning up the uh, area around the traces, make sure all my solder paste is cleaned up, not making any bridges anywhere. Because I need to look down and see where that pull down resistor trace is missing so I can put it back to factory uh, he can't use a tar amp supplied parts on independent repair the only tar amps warranty work yes yes very very true Damon I cannot use tar amps parts on private repairs Uh, I have a shelf up here 
that's got two sections of uh, trays, container trays like this. I've got stacks and stacks of these, and one of them is for tar amps, and the other is for private repairs. So that's how I separate out my uh, warranty parts from the private repair parts. So yeah, this is a uh, this is a board where it does take a little bit longer to do just from the amount of damage that has been caused by the failure. So I can typically have one of these boards uh, tore apart, done, repaired, and uh, ready for testing in about an hour and a half on an average repair. <laughs> this is not an average repair. Uh, so uh, this is a, what I call a meticulous, get an in-depth repair because so much has gone wrong with this. But let me take a peek here at the uh, pull-down resistor, which is located right here. But I cannot, can't quite see why that pull down is missing what it's missing. Oh, oh, I see what they did. Okay, I got it. I got it. So when I repair the trace for the uh, source of this transistor, it will complete the path for that pull down to go back uh, to where it should be. It's It's got a really small, faint trace coming off the side of that pull down resistor going to the via of that transistor. Well, that trace is blown out from the via to the main primary trace which what is this all right guys which side's the high side and low side here i think the side closest to the fan is the low side and this is the high side low side high side i do believe i have to go back and think about what i see on the scope so that's good that's good uh the snubber resistor is good the um, zeners are in, gate resistors are in. I should check to make sure I have good solder connections at the gate resistor, which if you read from the gate pad to the backside of the gate diode, you should read each one. 4.9, yeah, they're 4.7 ohm resistors, but this UT161D has 0.2 ohms resistance in the leads. 4.9, 4.9, oh yeah, looking great. Looking fantastic. I should probably pull that pull down out though and double check that just to be on the safe side. Again, goes back to I don't like returns. So I'm going to pull it off just to double check it. See if I can do it without moving the Zener diode here. There it is. And not confuse it with the rest of the resistors I have laying on the table here. It's reading. Oh, yeah, 10K. Right on the nose. What I like about tar amps, too, they pro they provide, you know, they're, they say they're 1% components, and by gosh, I tell you what, the everything they've sent so far, when it says 1%, they're 1%.
Yeah, I really just don't have anything bad to say about tar amps. I know some people are a little salty about the Brazilian design, but uh, that goes back to just being able to properly understand and know how to run these amps. Uh, uh, I'm running uh, the SA in my base 8K now. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you are. Oh, you're running the CB. Nice. Um, so may I ask how, how long you've been running that CB in your 8K? I got a Connie 2K amp that needs repair. A Con Naki 2K amp that needs repair. Hey, you know what? If you ever are in need of repairs or want to know even details or the process, EllensburgAmplifier.com uh, is my website. You can Google me all day long on Google, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. You'll find my website. I've got all sorts of information there. It's got all my videos. It's got information. It has details of services that I provide. And um, I have contact information there. If you go up to the top of my website and click on request service, it will give you a form. You can fill that form out and uh, let me know who you are and what you're looking at having done. And I will respond to you as soon as I can. I get most of my emails done after the business day is done, around uh, between 5 or 6 o'clock at night, Pacific time. I am in Washington, central Washington, so that's about the average time I get things done. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving on, as I have resistors stuck all over myself here. Hold on, there you go, clean my table. I can't stand a mess. So we have, what we have left are we have two capacitors. Uh, for the output and then we have the transistors to install so that's what we have left for this board here oh and i need a new si chip mm, let me go grab one uh let's see here if you remove the uh, that inductor you might work more comfortable yeah you but you know what another thing i mean there's things i like and there's things i don't like i don't like to remove inductors only for the simple fact that they take their inductor leads they take their inductor leads and they bend them over they fold them over to the top of the board the thing about removing the inductors is like any other copper wire any other metal you can only bend them so many times and when you do bend them you actually weaken up that joint just a little bit and if there's a common thing I see on Brazilian boards are broken inductor legs. So before this even gets put back together, I should say, before the cover even goes back on, I glue these down. These, when, by the time I'm done with these amps, there is nothing on this board that will move. Period. The, there's nothing. You'll see these 5 watt 10 ohm resistors right here. So you can move those around, wiggle them around. Those will not move. I use, I'm, for anyone new to my channel, I use hmm, Gorilla Glue, the Clear grip, grip Gorilla Glue. This stuff is fantastic. It holds up to heat really well. It's stiff. It's firm. I like it better than silicone. It's just a great all-around glue. I get that on Amazon, too. I get it in the three-pack. It's cheaper. I use a lot of it. Uh, so I'm always buying Gorilla Glue, but I will glue these inductors down because, man, I couldn't tell you how many times I get a board in and the only failure it has, no shorted transistors, no damage to the drive, but a broken inductor leg, I see it all the time. And it's one of those things, too, if I have a client that calls me up and they are telling me that they've got multiple tar amps in their competition rigs, I'll mention to them, I'll say, hey, you know, in your off season, if it's a good idea to pull those amps, send them in. I will replace all your thermal paste. I will glue down your inductors. I will glue down all the components that are loose. And I will also service the fans. And I do it at a relatively cheap cost. So 
you know, it's just all uh, preventive maintenance. You know, these amplifiers are not maintenance free. Well, they are to an average owner. I would never tell the average owner to open up their amp, but uh, from a, a repair tech standpoint of view here, they're not maintenance free. So let me go ahead. I'm just gonna go ahead and put these new capacitors in real quick like here. I usually see failed capacitors from low connected loads. Um, that's one of the telltale signs that I look for when it comes to amplifier failures and uh, gives me an idea that a really low resistive load was connected to it. Now again, this is a half ohm amplifier. So I am not questioning that it was hooked up. What's the, uh, what's the next step from half ohm? Uh, quarter ohm, right? Quarter ohm point, uh, is it 0.33 I think it is? I'm not sure. It's been many years since I've been in the uh, installation end of things. All right, and yes, I was. I was using the old Hacko to solder components in. Again, one of my one of my most favorite go-to tools is the desoldering gun. All right, let's. Uh, oh yeah, and I got so many traces to fix on this. That's that's crazy. I don't think this will be the first Brazilian style board that I've had in with this many failed traces. Uh, da, 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 young Yay, hey, th hey, thanks for joining in here. They don't complain when they see a Brazilian bikini though. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, you're going to get me in trouble here. Uh, See here, uh, it's only been in and right for a month, but it seems to be working fine. Hmm, that is absolutely some excellent, excellent news, Zach. I, I, I could not tell you more how happy. That makes me knowing that there's an amp out there that's got the CB in it that's running. Because oh, I don't I, I don't even want to go there. I was gonna I was gonna I was gonna give away a source, but um, yeah, I I thank you for that information because I'm probably going to stock some. CBs now because I know where to get them dirt cheap and original as a matter of fact I'm going to make me a note right now to order them to order them when I'm done with this live stream because that is probably the best information I have heard in a long time. And again with these transistors, they they spread the legs out just a little bit on their boards. Uh, so the three legs actually tend to spread apart. But if you take the transistor and just slightly stick it into the BS and just bend it over a little bit, you will bend those legs 
into the perfect shape that has the least amount of stress on them. I have not had a board come back from broken legs. So it took me a little while to figure out the best method for these Brazilian boards to reinstall transistors and still give it that curve uh, because these transistors sit up from the board a little bit. Oh, let's see here. Sorry again. What's your site for amplifier repair? It's Ellensburg Amplifier.com. Or you can Google me, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. That is my website. I offer some of the most competitive prices in the repair business. So. And I have some of the quickest turnaround times. I've gotten enough done in the last two weeks now where my turnaround time is uh, three to five weeks instead of four to six. And I think I'm even under uh, 30 amps now in line, which is which is good, I guess. Um, I think I'm at 20. It's on my website. <laughs> I can't remember what the number was, but I'm actually under 30 amps now in line. So my repair time should be shortening up here a little bit. Uh, I have three Crown XDI friends that need repair. Oh, wow. Those, uh, those are, are those the uh, JBLs? We're, what we'll do on something like that is we're going to say that's going to be tough to find the parts for that. Um, I am excellent at locating parts, though. So if it is the JBL amp, I think it is, um, feel free to hit me up. Uh, the first thing that I would start with uh, if you're interested in a repair is a picture of the boards. Uh, I will... I will determine uh, what the condition of the board is before I, you know, have you send it in. If the board is in a condition that just isn't feasible to repair, which doesn't happen very often, I can repair most anything, uh, but it just depends on how much money you want to invest in the repair of it, so... So right now I'm just going around and adjusting the height of the legs that are sticking out of the back side of the board. And then soldering all the pins in place. Pins, transistor legs, or whatever you want to call them. And again, you guys might notice I do have a new phone number, which you will find on the website now. And for anyone that's got my personal number, yeah, please feel free to continue to use the personal number. Um, but I do have a new business number that I will be having people use now. There's a lot of burnt traces on this board. But never fear. I'm a trace pro. And then another thing too. This, this solder 
strip here on the outside of the board actually rests against the heat sink. So when you're soldering around the transistors, make sure you don't have big hills of solder that will interfere. What? So what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that the solder is, uh, there's no hills on it, so it sits flat in the heat sink. So we don't want heat sink issues. Oh, let's see here, what do you, um, uh, break the output inductor leg on the, uh, and it takes out all kinds of stuff on the output side. Oh, oh really? Um... I, th I have dealt with a four channel, uh, I think it was a sound, let's see here, I think it was a sundown four channel, it was a clone, it was a, it was a Brazilian clone, and it had a broken inductor on one of the four channels, and it took out all sorts of stuff, I had to put a lot of parts in it to get it back up and running. Uh, what do you think of the board, uh, see the uh, is the thermal mass of the 3014 that helps? Is it the thermal mass of the 3014 that helps? Thermal mass of the 3014. I am not sure what you're talking about on that one there, Damon. Of the 3014. Uh, what do you think of those boards? I, You know, they're... they're great for their time uh i am a, a huge fan of the earlier jbl boards uh they're excellent design they're built very very well uh, the the ones i get in for repair have failed because it, it the transistors just got too hot and then they fail uh, a lot of people don't know that as temperature rises in a transistor you're junction current ratings drop like a rock um, i think i showed that on one of the videos i just uploaded yeah it was it was on that uh that dd i think it was the dd board i was showing the transistors what it looked like after it blew up um but uh the, i was showed the current ratings of that and uh it was on a 24 and 40 and those 24 and 40s are on many, many amplifiers of the uh, Korean style. So the uh, current rate is dropped like a rock when they get hot. Uh, fingernails on a chalkboard, guys. So if you're sensitive to that kind of noise, uh, please feel free to turn the volume down. It's going to take just a second to get rid of this solder mask here. really quick process so i'll be quick quick with this uh, what i do is i use a scalpel to expose the copper and i do it relatively quick because here in a second i'm going to grab some uh, flux and i'm going to put some flux on this copper keep to keep any uh, copper from oxidizing Fingernails on a chalkboard, guys. Sorry about that, but it, I got to get this mask on. Toothbrush. Flux. Perfection. Solder. What I do is I put a little thin layer of solder on the exposed copper.
I see my scalpel blade is not very flat. It's leaving some pretty good gouges. Uh, let's see here. I have a pair of... Uh, I was uh, talking to Rogerio Torrams and asked him if the SACB would work, and he said he wasn't sure. So I said, what the hell? That's right. Yeah, yeah, Zachary. Yeah. Um, I have never asked Torrams that particular question because I, from a manufacturer standpoint or point of view, I don't know how they would look at us, you know, replacing some of their chips with chips that are not... Uh, directly coinciding with the prints. So I I had purchased 20 or so of the CBs uh, to, to do some testing, which I think you might have just answered my own questions on testing. So uh, where do you get your parts from? I have got some from China and they all take a long time to deliver. Um, I get my parts from DigiKey. Sometimes Mauser, Newark, New Ark, um, uh, Windsource, super expensive though, super expensive. Windsource is really good. Um, I use a there's a gal that I use uh, in China. She's a fantastic person. She's a great locator, and she uh, has never failed me on parts. But uh, I use. DHL to get him here in just a couple days from her. So if you are interested in any of that contact information, please get a hold of me. Uh, you can uh, you can email me on my website. You can call me directly. There's one of my phones. The other phone is up here. Uh, so feel free to get you know get a hold of me. I am not bashful as long as it's uh, you know not too late at night depending on who you are <laughs> uh but uh yeah i will be more than happy to share with you my leads or contacts or sources for parts so what i'm doing is i'm making jumpers one two three four five one two three four Simple, simple, if I don't lose my tweezers. Uh-oh, I must be getting tired because I'm starting to misplace things. There we go. Uh, but yeah, those are my primary uh, go-to people. Oh, Arrow. Don't forget Arrow. I love Arrow, too. Uh, Arrow's a great place. They, uh... They have never failed me either. Although, you should see, I got uh, I got an order in of 124 N40s from Newark, and they came in four different batches. So I have like four different date codes. It's like they had to source them from everywhere. It was really interesting uh, as I opened up that box yesterday. A transistor you guys will need if you do repair a lot of uh, the uh, Korean boards are the uh, 24 and 40s. I left a few there on uh, Newark for you guys. Not very many though. If you're looking for 24 and 40s. Not very many. I left a few. So when I do trace repair, I base my trace repairs uh, in this kind of situation off of surface area. And if there's one resource that most every repair person has that's got a ton of surface area for uh, contact for copper, it's going to be your solder braid. I've always wanted to do a test of how many amps you can draw through one inch of 
copper solder braid. Be interesting to see that. So let me get back to this. Uh, let's hear. Uh, from Portugal. Hey, Ray, hey, thanks for joining from Portugal, Thomas. Where do you get your parts from? I have a pair of mini flat nose pliers that slip in the spread that fits legs. Perfect. Oh, that's cheating though, Damon. That's cheating. Good night. Uh, can I send you my kicker SX? Ew. Ew. Uh, if you go to my website at the bottom of my frequently asked questions page, you will see that Kicker is one of those manufacturers that I really do tend to shy away from. I always request uh, pictures ahead of time for Kicker amplifiers. Uh, but at the bottom of my frequently asked questions, you're going to find a uh, section there that says, what amplifiers I don't service. I know I'm not saying I don't service all of them. I There are some kicker amplifiers I just particularly don't like to do. Uh, I get enough business where I can kind of be choosy on what I do and what I service. So uh, kicker and MTX Rockford Fosgate are three manufacturers that I've never really agreed on how they design their circuits. Uh, they make a simple process and make it as hard as possible. It's just they're a lot they're a lot tougher to troubleshoot. And I uh, this time of year I just I don't have a lot of time due to the competition repairs that I do. So I kind of have to watch what amplifiers I take in from those manufacturers this time of year. Now, if it was past October into the winter, uh, you bet. Get a hold of me. I'll, I'll take a look at your amp for you. Let's see here. Uh, busted by the wife. <laughs> uh, I'm working on an audio bond 2200 and a repair was just and it cranked up and the output MOSFET went down. I didn't have it in the amp case. Could that have caused it to go down? Yes, absolutely. It's probably going to be a class AB amplifier that you're talking about. And it probably went into what we call thermal runaway. Uh, I can't remember exactly how they designed their circuit, but I think their bias transistor is heat sink mounted. Well, it's it's mounted to the heat sink, not to keep it cool, it's there to really tell the amplifier how to bias the transistors based on the temperature of the uh, case. So that is uh, that is something, probably a large component of why the transistor failed. It probably went into thermal runaway. A lot of Class AB amplifiers, after I'm done repairing them, the very first time I fire it up, I'm going to use my thermal camera, and I'm going to be taking a look at it to see what heats up because if you get an output transistor that heats up there's nothing there to tell it to slow back down the bias in other words so sorry guys i'm trying to uh pay attention to chat and of course stay on task here so uh let's see here but, 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 uh, it has a few blown mosfets um, it really just depends is the power supply or output section. So, uh, miss those JBL BP 1200s. Those, yeah, you know, I just JBL and they're fun to work on too. JBL amplifiers are fun, in my opinion, they're fun. Some people might find the JBL amplifiers to be a little tedious uh, due to the drive circuits that they use, but for the most part, they're a, they're a pretty fun amplifier to work on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The, this transistor right here where the Zener diode is, the trace that blew out, blew out all the way up to the Zener diode. So that's going to be a little 
a little trickier to do, but never fear. There's not a trace that has defeated me yet. So uh, check, check. DJ, hey, thanks for dropping in. Mauser, yeah, Mauser. Oh, sh Thomas, Thomas, you didn't say that for the uh, SI-E244s, did you? Ah, yeah, that's where I'm headed because uh, that's where I got them from. And I see they have more, and I'm going to buy them <laughs> if you guys don't beat me to it. Ew, that trace is not going to be fun. Mm. That's okay, though. I got it. I got it. Uh, flux. We're going to need some flux on this. Solder. We're going to need solder. And... Ooh, look at that. Up, did it, up, did it? Oh, no. Wow. Not so fun to do this one. There we go. That's what I wanted to do. All right. So one trace down, 100 more to go. Ah. Hold on. I got a, I have a cable that has fallen on my head. All right, where was I? Check, check, my friend. I gotta go, Todd. Hey, uh, yeah, Cliff, uh, get for work. Oh, yes, yeah, work, yeah. We'll talk with you later, Cliff, there. If you have any questions on that Smart 3 still, hit me up. If my uh, text didn't help you at all, I can try to help you out a little bit better there. about the uh, high side, you should see your uh, rail voltage on the drain. There we go. All right, so we've got to go, uh, let's see here. Hi, Todd, Ron, owner of the Optimist. Hey, Ron, hey, good to see you here. I'm, uh, I'm happy that uh, you're pleased with the outcome of that amplifier. It was a great amp to do. Uh, I, I love working on older boards. I'm not saying I don't like the newer boards here, but uh, the older boards just, they had a really simple design. So if you are looking for boards that are, will teach you about uh, repair, I would look into older amplifiers. They're a little, they're, they got a little bit more area, a little bit more room to work in. You could follow the paths a little bit better and they were simplified. Not like today's circuits where you have current sense circuits, you know, that'll adjust your pulse width. So, Whew, what a trace repair is something else. I tell you that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, admit a cliff. You're going to work. 
but you're not really going to work. <laughs> uh, the old Cliff. Cliff's a great guy. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, Cliff is another uh, amp repair guy. He, uh, he also works for Tar Amps. And we do uh, we do collaborate quite a bit. And once you guys, you know, do, you know, a number of trace repairs you'll get you'll get to where you can do these pretty quick problem free Let's see here. As long as they leave me alone at work, I'll be fine. <laughs> uh, yeah, go get those amps done, Cliff. I'll have this 12K done before you know it. So this is not a typical standard failure, uh, just to point that out. By any means, this is not a standard failure for one of these amplifiers. I mean, it, you know, the 8Ks and 12Ks, they do have their, uh, they do have their trace issues, especially if, uh, you know, you buy one of these right off the store shelf and you, run it hard and you'll burn the trace out on it uh, sometimes but uh, if you buy one of these new and you don't want to burn the traces out send it in it doesn't take uh, long at all to reinforce the traces to uh, prevent the traces from acting like fuses Yeah, it doesn't take, doesn't take much to, uh, I don't want to say make them better. I mean, the, the whole key to this is just to prevent failure. So I guess in a roundabout way, making it better. Otherwise, we're looking good. We're looking really good. Uh, all the traces are done. How many traces is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, oh, five, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen trace repairs. Now, if this was a private repair, this would have cost the owner uh, some money. So there it is. I'm going to clean up the pads where the SI8244 goes. Simple as that. That is how you clean up the pads for a IC. You can use your solder braid, but you know what? What is this stuff? Thirty bucks a roll. Uh, I would much rather use solder braid for areas that really, really need it. Uh, SI eight two four four. 
I'm trying to get this done for you guys here. Now, let's see, where is the, let's see, let's do tar apps. S, I, E, 2, S, I, 8, 2, 4, 4, here we go. And I do thank tar amps for supplying me parts again to repair these boards. Turn the hack of soldering iron on, put some flux down. Time is it five o'clock? Oh, I'm three, I'm two hours in on this. I'm a half hour beyond normal schedule. Well, that's okay. It's all for you guys. But that's the roundabout. What do they call that? What's the word? I don't know what today's kids using gist. Gist of things. I'm getting old. Uh, that's basically more or less the repair of a 12K. Got the old Amtec flux on the board here. Make sure that IC is straight. You always got to make sure your ICs are straight. Solder the pin down. Looks like the chip is up. Oh, there we go. I solder one pin down opposite of each side, and then I just double check the alignment of the IC. And just tap each leg with the iron. Uh, I have the iron set at uh, 720 degrees, just to let you guys know. For anyone that uh, asks about temperatures and I think whatever people ask. Like for the air station, I'm set at 20% air. I don't even know what temperature I'm set at. 460 degrees Celsius. 20% air. On a uh, ST862D. I know some people get technical with those kind of numbers. My technicality lies in whatever gets the job done. <laughs> so, uh, if someone were to ask me tomorrow what's my temperature setting for my iron, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I'd have to look at the iron. Uh, I don't have things like that memorized. There it is, guys. That is an amplifier. Uh, back together. Hey, Damon, uh, thanks for dropping in. Uh, take care of yourself, and we'll see you on your next video, too. Uh, to take the team to practice driving. Oh, my gosh. Practice driving. Yeah, I have a 16-year-old son that is uh, in his driving. He's done his driver's ed, so, yeah. Kids behind the wheels. Today's society is interesting. So, of course, I'm going to clean off the flux. And, of course, my marker. Okay. 
my little pile of Q-tips here. So what do you think? Are we going to read the right resistance values? All right. Here it is. This is the time when we... I can tell you really quick if an amplifier is going to work based on the resistance. Beautiful. That's what we call beautiful. 6.8K on the high side. Good source. That's exactly what I'm looking for. 6.8. Six eight seven one. Ah, oh, that is perfect. And then I'll switch my leads around. I use my black lead on the gate, red lead on the source uh, when I t do all my resistance measurements. So we were six eight and seven one, correct? Seven one, and are we going to be six eight? If I can get a good connection. <laughs> uh, and we are oh six nine i mean we're pretty we're pretty pretty dang close oh it's pretty close we're within what uh what is that a hundred ohms or uh, six so we're six nine five and we're seven uh, seven one. Uh, we're pretty dang close. Uh, so again, that value is going to be a little different because we have changed the IC here. We have changed the Zener diodes and uh, five of the gate diodes. Now, if there's a difference between the two sides, we're going to adjust it out right here on our DC offset. But I will bet, as long as I don't have any drain source shorts, 33, perfect, uh, drain source, uh, uh, 33, perfect. And of course, that side, if we didn't have any shorts there. Um, I've done that before. I've checked my drain or my gate to source, and I was like, oh, looks great, looks great, looks great. Put the amp together, fired up, and I had a short between uh, source and drain. And let's just say the transistor failed <laughs> pretty drastically, too. And I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to check one more thing here. I just want to make sure this capacitor is still reading good here 56 and climbing 56k and climbing okay good so that is the repair of a 12k amplifier for you guys thermal paste everywhere of course so I'm going to glue everything down glue the inductors down I'm going to glue transformer windings down there are some transformer windings here that I would like to see a little bit more solid so I uh, if I can hear it when I run my finger across it it's in my opinion it's too loose it'll eventually rub right through the varnish on that winding and it'll make a it'll just make a little ringing noise so some of these transformers need a little bit of reinforcement the inductors i'm going to glue down and i'm going to glue down the resistors and of course the capacitors so 
that. Hey, Micromage, hey, thanks for joining in. Uh, have you ever had a Power USAM come in for? I have not. Not a single one. Um, yep, not a single one. I saw the design of those on Sam's channel. So, uh, again, they're, in my opinion, they're another excellent design board. Uh, they're secured well. I'm uh, very impressed with how they glue their transformers. So, uh, but I'm not sure if that's a, I'm not sure, that's a European amplifier, isn't it? I think it's European. And I'm not sure I'd ever see any in Washington. But what I'm doing now is I'm just gluing down the capacitors that I had installed. Because you know that these amplifiers go in rigs where there's a ton of vibration. In some of these competition rigs, there's the whole vehicle is an enclosure. So there's a lot of risk for vibration damage on any competition amplifier. I just did a, there's a DD, a digital design amp. I don't know what uh, size it was because there was no stickers on it, but I'd have to assume it was in the 10K range, 10 to 12K range. And, oh man, it had severe uh, solder joint failures from vibration damage. Just got it done, just got it mailed out today. And that, uh, let's see here. I have their 5K and 15K best Brazilian full bridge hands down. I'm in Tacoma. Oh, you've seen them here in shows? Hey, you're in Tacoma? Well, if you ever need amp repair, and you know where to find someone local. There's a couple clients I have out of Tacoma. So what I'm doing is I'm just going around and nailing down any winding that's got some any noise to it when I run my fingernail across it. Uh, some of the uh, amps, like the Pitbull amps, uh, I would glue every single one of their trans transformers down. They're, I'm not saying they have really bad transformers, but man, they uh, they have some loose windings. And I feel sorry for, you know, any client that has an amplifier failure from a tran transformer winding because I uh, I can I could probably fix it if I had enough time, but transformers are something that you just really don't uh, mess with. Just remember, you know, these tra these transformers are directly across your battery, so when one of these if a transformer shorts to ground, uh, you're going to have all that current. The only way it's going to stop is either you pull the pull the batteries, pop pops the fuses, or the windings blow completely open. And that is the preparation of the amplifier. I gotta let the glue dry before I put power to this. I would hate to have a short uh, because, you know, I'm not, this glue isn't very conductive, but I never want to risk it after doing all this work. And let's see here, is that it? Is that it? Mm, that's gonna be it. Everything else is pretty secure. The fans, I once I get the board mounted in the heat sink, I will glue the fan to the board. Not 100% because they got to be serviceable. But I glue the corners down to help them uh, keep from vibrating. They get noisy. But there's a, there's a, oh, I just stuck my finger in the glue. Uh, there's a 12K repair there for you. So, quick, simple, two hours later, Two hours, 20 minutes later, we went from a completely blown output, multiple, multiple traces failed, 
all the components, even the drive IC, uh, to an amp that's glued down. Resistance values are reading exactly where they should be between the two sides and high and low sides. Uh, I have no concerns that it won't start. So there it is, the board for you guys. Uh, so if you have any questions, please leave them down below in the comments um, or email me directly, ellensburgamplifier.com. You can Google me, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. Uh, you can call me direct. You can text me. Uh, you can get a hold of me in any way you choose. If you're local, I do take drop-offs, um, kind of by appointment. So if you have drop-offs you want to take, I do take drop-offs, so you don't have to pay for the shipping. But I am primarily a mail-in repair business. So uh, I do thank you guys for watching. Let's see here. Let me check the comments here real quick. Uh, you've been recommended by a few of my friends. Best of believe in sending amps your way if I ever need repairs. Uh, yeah, hey, thanks. You know, I uh, my my name has gotten out in the competition world so uh, i uh, i have been extremely busy with the competition amplifiers um which is good which is good i enjoy it i enjoy what i do and i will always do my best for any any client and uh, and provide only the best prices available so um keep me my Keep everyone updated on the Ram Fire Repair and Service. So I do thank you guys for watching. Good 12K done here for you guys. And uh, we will catch you on the next one. Stay safe. Please keep your fingers out of the rails. These rectifiers, as soon as you charge one of these boards, they do take some time to discharge. There are discharge resistors, but it is a slow process. Going from 160 volts to zero volts takes time. And that can give you an absolute bad day. So keep your fingers